Welcome back to Wandering. In this episode, we're going to take a fond look back at a presentation that was done during 2020, and it was done spur of the moment when uh, we realized that Stan was traveling and visiting the Grand Canyon. This morning, I had breakfast and coffee with Stan on the rim of the Grand Canyon. I've always dreamed of doing what you're doing, Stan, the adventure of a lifetime. Thanks to the miracle of Facebook, we are all riding with you and living the dream. By the way, note the careful placement of Stan's jeans to carefully hide the souvenir tube socks he bought while he was at the visitor center. In 1912, Arizona became America's 48th state, and four years later, the National Park Service was officially formed. Both of these events helped the process of establishing the Grand Canyon as a national park. Finally, on February 26, 1919, President Woodrow Wilson signed the legislation officially establishing the canyon as a national park. The timing was perfect as it put to an end the proposals to dam the Colorado River. For the 1934 schedule, Secretary of the Interior Harold Ickes saw an opportunity to advertise the national park system. Ickes felt many Americans were unaware the federal government had set aside vast amounts of land for their enjoyment and for future generations. At his suggestion, 1934 had been declared National Parks Year. Ickes now proposed the legacy of the national parks be portrayed on postage stamps to give people a glimpse of their diversity and the natural beauty. FDR approved the idea immediately, and 10 parks were chosen, each to be pictured on a different denomination ranging from one cent to 10 cents. This stamp honors John Wesley Powell, who was one of the early explorers on the Green and Colorado Rivers when he made the perilous journey along a thousand-mile stretch of the Grand Canyon. It was the first government-sponsored passage through the Grand Canyon. Here's the front side of the postcard stand sent me, with a small illustration of the Grand Canyon. That same little drawing appears on postal stationery for airmail. I had already finished this presentation when I saw this posted on a Facebook stamp group. How appropriate! The second issue of the America series celebrates natural world wonders. The U.S. issue pictures the Grand Canyon not as it is today, but as it might have looked almost 500 years ago. The history of the Grand Canyon began up to two billion years ago when some of the oldest rock in the canyon was lifted to create a great mountain range nearly six miles high. Over millions of years, the land was raised, eroded, and raised again several times. Then, about six million years ago, the Colorado River began carving through the rock, creating the vast canyon. Senator Benjamin Harrison was the first person to introduce legislation calling for the creation of Grand Canyon National Park. His 1882 bill failed, and he tried again unsuccessfully in 1883 and 1886. It was not until after Harrison became president that he was able to provide some protection to the area. It was established as the Grand Canyon Forest Reserve in 1893, though some mining and logging was still allowed. 
Teddy Roosevelt on the Grand Canyon in 1908. Let this great wonder of nature remain as it is now. You cannot improve on it. But what you can do is keep it for your children, your children's children, and all who come after you as the one great sight which every American should see. If you compare looking at a postage stamp of the Grand Canyon to standing on the rim and looking at the real thing, it is like looking at a photograph of a grain of sand while sitting on an endless stretch of beach. It doesn't matter how many images you try to take of the Grand Canyon or how many images you have ever seen, this is one of the places on earth that you must visit in person to truly appreciate. And now, as Lefty might say, back to you, Stan. But today, I will say, back to you, Becca. <laughs>